women talk about self love they're not doing it men are doing self love they're not talking about it because <laughs> oh. men <laughs> did you get that so i always tell people that life is about polarities right so as much as i am very independent i'm very needy mm. but i know where to be needy i can't be needy everywhere mm. you know so as much as i'm very ambitious i can be very lazy so self awareness helps you to identify your shadows and see how to pair them up with your positive side without rejecting them understanding that chakra which is the root chakra led me to have conversations with my mom about what was life for her when she conceived me because there was a sense in me that i don't feel grounded i don't feel confident about myself i don't feel worthy i don't feel good enough so mm-hmm. which means my feet are not on the ground literally you know like i i date the wrong people i i get used all the time i get disregarded by managers i so what's going on sometimes we forget that even when we've lost a lot of we've lost money we've lost assets that we still have the resources that we had to generate that money the resources that we had to to create that wealth that we are crying over and i i thought what a day what a perfect opportunity to call a mindset <laughs> uzianda i'm with zianda today she is mindset bad as i saw that <laughs> name and wondered what the heck? oh my goodness <laughs> <laughs> when you sit at home and you're brainstorming names to call yourself <laughs> by <laughs> mindset bad as whose, bra- whose and you must brilliant t- idea was it to you must say it with an attitude like you are saying it with a church voice like you must okay. say it with a bad as you know Hey. Must have that. <laughs> <laughs> What idea was it to call you that? <laughs> so I think mindset was mine, but because of the type of messaging I have, it's kind of always under the skin type of connections that I have with people and my clients. Mm. So they always say, mm, "You make me say things I didn't feel like saying." Then I was like, "Oh, then I'm a badass then." if i can just deep dive oh, so that like came that. from you that came from me and a brand and marketing person yeah beautiful <laughs> all right so you've got a journal yep. on self care self coaching journal mm-hmm. and you have a book on healing getting centered finding inner balance yeah talk to us about the journal All right. So, I think um I'm unable to talk about the journal without talking about my journey. Okay. Because my journey led to the journal. I love it. Is that is that all right? That's all right. All right. So, so my journey of um being coached um started in 2015 March, right? Mm-hmm. And it had begun because I had decided to leave corporate that year. and i had been in corporate for 13 years at that point but i still felt there's a void um there's something missing mm. i was working with people in corporate I was in the hr department and so 13 years later i was like this is not it it's still not what i'm supposed to do plus uh the toxicity in corporate was not my vibe mm. i don't do well with too much hustle and bustle negativity Okay. You know, so I was struggling with that. So I decided to leave corporate one because there was a void too. The toxicity was into culture that I could acclimatize to ever 13 years later, I just couldn't. And uh three, there was something that said this is not enough. Something else needs to be done and I didn't know what that was. So when I resigned, I was like, let me go back to entrepreneurship. I'll figure it out. I didn't wasn't clear at the time what I was going to do. So someone said to me, "Don't you want to do coaching? I think you'll be a great coach." You know, um my entire life I've grown up with people telling me their stuff, opening up to me easily. Even from high school I was like a, some social worker of sorts, you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so so that tell that tells me that the soul always knows its journey. Mm-hmm. It's just that sometimes we overlook it because it seems so simple and so unimportant maybe at the time. So I was led to coaching because something said I've always been a social worker anyways in some way 
of form. So I then attended coaching. I thought that I was just going to be academic about this thing, study this thing, get a certificate and go coach people. Mm. Little did I know that the entire year I'd be coached myself. So one hand you are studying it, one hand it is practiced on you. Mm. So it unraveled me. Coaching that year unraveled me. It made me look into myself in areas where I thought I dealt with them. And it turned out that I had put them under the carpet. I hadn't dealt with them. And that year would show me that. Where were you studying? So it's, uh, it's a company called Star Leadership, ICF accredited. Um, a, a, a colleague of mine who's a good friend of mine, Savannah Steinbeck, owns it. And she runs the program. So as you would know, coach, coaching, yeah. <laughs> it deals with your triggers, your defense mechanisms and all of that stuff. And the coaching modality for me was greater in its impact than psychology. I've done industrial and organizational psychology by academic background, mm. but somehow coaching went deeper than what the, the academic psychology did. So, yeah, so the I entire like the year then was that. Part, and mm. as you're saying, as I, I've had a experience with coaching as well, with different schools of thought. What I appreciate more with the coaching, though, is the speed at which you get the outcome. Yes, yes. That's why I've been actually resisting to, to register as an industrial psychologist. So I was like, I'm not going to finish this master's. I'm going to just touch it and leave it, touch it and leave it. Because I don't want to register as a psychologist. Because I felt like psych being a psychologist will confine me, will box me. Meanwhile, coaching allows me to just be, you know. Mm. But I'm contemplating going that road. But uh, it's another story. Okay. So, so yeah, you're so on then, this journey and then... Yeah, so 2015 then introduces me to coaching. And uh, the coaching techniques, the coaching questioning techniques... They help me realize, oh my goodness, there's depth in reflection. If I don't reflect honestly, I cannot answer myself. If I ask myself superficial questions, I'll get from myself superficial answers. Mm. So then I go through that the whole year and it unravels me. It transforms the way I look at myself and other things. And then the journey would begin. And as you know, it continues. It never stops. It never stops, yeah. But then uh, 2020, then I learned that we are all going through a lot internally. Because 2020 would be the year where people had to sit down with themselves and they couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> people were about to just enter Viscopis in 2020 if they didn't. <laughs> in, in their majorities. My, my clients were struggling. I was struggling. I was struggling with internal thoughts that I thought I had dealt with, but I hadn't. You know? So then I realized a lot of people needed coaching in 2020 and 2021 and could not access it because it's not that cheap. Mm. And so I said, okay, how can I help some of my clients that are not coming from corporates and therefore cannot afford coaching um, access some element of it, you know? And uh, I started just contemplating writing the book. So the book really is, is as though you're being coached by me, but you're asking your questions to yourself. So it's structured in a way that it will explain a theme. So if it's self-awareness as an example, I would explain mm -hmm. what that means, what it is. Mm -hmm. And I would explain um, if you are self-aware, what advantages would there be for you? And then I will ask you questions as though you were asked by me. Of course, it doesn't touch in terms of depth as I would if I was in front of you, but it gives you some sort of way to know how to ask the right questions. Part of the power of coaching is I can ask a question and see when you're not being truthful sometimes. Or when yep. you're saying something and I can tell you mean something else, those little yes. subtle... Yes, yes, yes. That yes, allow yes. us then to probe further. Yes, yes. Because if you're coaching yes. yourself and you're lying to yourself, then the book won't ask you a follow-up question. Absolutely. The book doesn't ask you the follow-up questions. And so my clients always say, Z, I think I still need you. Then I say, okay, fine. Do the first, the groundwork yourself. So read the thing, ask yourself the first questions. Hear yourself lying to yourself. <laughs> How about that? So that when you come to meet me, we don't have to fight with your ego about you having lied because you would have surfaced that already. Or mm. see yourself being superficial with yourself. Mm. So you can have an appreciation of how it feels like to go deeper. Out of curiosity though, because the questions that I hear practically are a coaching session. Mm. Don't you ever have a fear that someone can take this and become a coach themselves? So, Because they now have there's a lot the of manual. coaches out there, hey? Have you noticed? <laughs> There's thousands of coaches. 
That's why go on TikTok, everyone me, is a coach. That's why when you're asking me about <laughs> me and coaching, I just say I'm exclusively business coach. Yes, yes. There's a lot there of people is, who are calling themselves coaches. Eh? Yeah, it's very the, interesting. Yeah. There's the added layer with business that not many people can go to, so uh-huh. I, I just go there. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So, so yes, someone can attempt to want to coach others, which I know they might fail dismally because you can only meet others at the level at which you have met yourself. Mm. So even if you can try it, you can only meet them where you are. You can't go deeper than that if you have not done the depth of work, you know. Mm. Um, but I always say to my clients, um, as soon as we're done, as a, for example, the first theme is self-awareness. Mm-hmm. As soon as you've done self-awareness, I have group coaching sessions every month on a particular theme. Mm-hmm. So I can show them how to go deeper. I don't coach there. I just teach how to process the book, the book and how mm-hmm. to self-coach. And I say to them, to the level that you feel you have gone deeper in yourself, then you can start with your own child if they are old enough. You can start with your own partner and ask these questions and answer them together. And in that way, you are now collaborating and having kind of a partner in this transformation healing journey. You're not alone. So to that extent, they can. But of course, others can take it and go on uh, TikTok and uh, (laughs) (laughs) we can control that. (laughs) So yeah, you said something interesting. Get deep with yourself. Why is that important? Mm. Goodness gracious me, it's so crucial. And what's the difference between someone who, who does it and someone who doesn't? Who doesn't do it. So going deep, coach, is so important because the answers we're looking for are within ourselves. But then there's a lot of junk and good stuff within mm. ourselves. So when you ask the deep questions, you're trying to just kind of separate the junk from the good so you can find the answer you're looking for Mm. so i always make an example so when someone meets me for the first time and i'm like how are you doing i'm fine and how are you that's too surface (laughs) (laughs) so that for me would be a surface answer and they're assuming my question is surface because they are familiar with it Mm. family members and friends would ask you how are you doing and you're like i'm fine sharp how's it because we've gotten used to it Mm. and then i stop and i'm like how are you doing because I'm not, I'm not your community. I'm not where you come from. I'm meaningful about the question. And only then do the, does it click, oh, damn. That's a good question. How am I? So it's as simple as that. Depth is as simple as that. And you're saying many people live their lives without the depth. Oftentimes. I've learned through my own coaching process that I had been asleep this entire time and I thought I was awake, like... I was unconsciously just moving through life, thinking I was consciously moving through life. So there are a lot of people who think they are also conscious, but they're not. I want us to help <coughs> two people today. Yeah. Someone who's going through a tough time. Mm-hmm. How to process challenges like loss, gone through a, a, an accident, just a tough time. Life a loss is of, some, of some sort. Yeah, it could be unemployed, Divorce. frustrated because you're looking for a job. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Someone who's going through that, how, how do you help them process that part of their journey hmm. and understand that it's going to pass? And it does pass at some point. <laughs> but when you are in it, in the thick of it, <laughs> it doesn't feel like that at all. So so let me put it this way, Coach. Um, there's a lot of losses that we experience and we are almost all grieving, right? So loss of job is a loss. Loss of a child is a loss. Loss of marriage is a loss. Um, you know, loss of, I don't know, of a relationship is a loss, right? Mm. So for me, the first starting point is always the, what part did I play Mm. in this outcome that I'm facing? So how could I have contributed? Let's put death aside because oftentimes death happens whether we like it or not. It's just yeah, a way of life. Those that one. Situations yes. outside our control. Yeah. So there's sometimes a loss of work, mm. um, a loss of, um, I don't know, access to market that you already had and then you lost it as an entrepreneur. There's always a part you've played, whether you did it consciously or unconsciously, energetically on or physically, you know? Okay. So for me, personally, that question always helps me to look at things as they are, as opposed to how I wish they were. That's always a starting point for me. Starting point is how did I get myself How did I contribute? We call it internal locus of control. What Mm. could have been my contribution 
to this that I'm looking at because nothing happens to me without my permission sometimes, if not most times. Permission and contribution. Yep. Because there's a decision you took yep. at some point yeah. Yeah. that led you there. Yeah. So some, someone will say, I didn't contribute to me losing the job. You probably have. Uh, as an HR practitioner, I know how employees contribute to their demise and they are not so <laughs> unconscious of it. <laughs> So, so and, and we do these frivolous, unnecessary behaviors thinking no one is watching and we disregard our work, we don't um, respect our tasks, we do not appreciate what we have until it's taken away from us. For entrepreneurs, sometimes it's even treating clients the way you Absolutely. Say. Absolutely. There's an entrepreneur that I said I'm going to refer to you for business coaching. She says to me, I'm stuck, I'm feeling stuck, I'm not getting any opportunities. Um, this thing was burning in my belly only three months ago, but now I feel like nothing is happening. And I said, what is your connection between you and the business itself? Mm. Is your own spirit, energy, emotions interconnected to what you say you do? Mm. Let's start there before you go to the nuts and bolts of the technical side of it. She's like, oh, damn, I'm not with it. I said, that's where you start. So when did you lose the grip? Why are you not with it emotionally? Why have you disconnected to it mentally? So why, how must it survive without your own energy contribution? So when you say, <clears throat> I contribute, how did I contribute mm -hmm. to getting there? For an entrepreneur mm -hmm. or even for someone who's not an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. doesn't that make you feel worse about where you are? It should. <laughs> That's to the, the whole point, idea. To the point <laughs> of crippling you. <laughs> it should make you uncomfortable. <laughs> Haven't you noticed that the best lessons we learn are exactly when we feel discomfort? Yeah. Because happy moments don't bring us lessons, do they? They mm. just make us feel like we've done this, we're good at this. Which is nice because it's reaffirming. Mm. But the tough times are the times where you've learned a lot about yourself. Which is where the gem is. So you should feel uncomfortable because then that's what the starting point is for you to open up your eyes and be consciously aware of the things you do consciously or unconsciously that are detrimental to your own life. Have you seen someone who's going through a tough time, does some of the reflection that we're talking about, feels the pain, mm. okay, I can see how I contributed to me getting here, mm -hmm. but doesn't still make a change. They are in pain, but there's a block somewhere. Mm -hmm. that keeps them stuck. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So um, it's it's layered. I think as human beings, we are so layered, you know? We are complicated. Yo, 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 yo. We are beyond complex, eh? Because I can perceive the pain. I can say this is a part of plate. I'm consciously aware of it. Mm. If I were to be given this opportunity again, I will make sure I don't do A, B, C, and D again because I don't want the same outcome. Cool then you must go do the thing. But you must expect that the universe is going to test you on whether or not you are meaningful about those utterances. Mm, so you once see, you make a commitment, you, once you make a commitment, you have to on yes. it. Yes. How, how must you not? So why, why must you be given something that you already had and then lost and then just be given again just for the fun of it without any assessment of sorts that you actually really, really, really mm. desire it? For so me to know the desire, test. I would test you. Mm. If I was your creator, I would do that. We test children. Mm. They say to us, they want a PlayStation. We say to them, they must pass first. One, two, three, yeah. Mm. Get 90% for mathematics first, and then by December, I'll buy you the PlayStation you want. What are you doing? You're testing resilience. Do you really want the desired outcome? Do you really, really, really want it? If you don't, then I'll see in your marks. So why mustn't we be tested? Isn't that mm. hypocritical? Well, I guess... It's easy to see when you do it with the kids. Uh -huh. I was talking to another coach and they wanted to increase sales. And one thing I was pointing out was I have learned that it's important to, it's easy for us to tell clients what to do. Yep. But when you're faced with the same problem, it's almost like all the coaching tricks that you know <laughs> disappear <laughs> from your brain or something. <laughs> So I say, ah. as a coach, you actually have all the knowledge that you yes. you, you yes. need to dig yes. yourself out of this hole yes. and get some clients. Yes. And they said something interesting, so I had to hear your thoughts about it. Because they're saying, when I'm telling a client 
they know I will hold them accountable to the resolution that we set, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. when they walk out, they implement because they know, hey, he's coming or she's coming, right? But when I'm telling myself, the emotional blocks that I have tell me that you're not going to do this as I'm thinking about <laughs> it. I need to do this. Uh, you're not gonna do you're this. You're not gonna do it. I need to do this. Uh -huh. You're not going to do uh -huh. this. I love that. I have to be better. I love that example. With the, just the emotional blocks that yeah. I sit with, yeah. even as yeah. a coach, and so I don't get to move. What's your thought on that? So in my in my experience, right? So that voice, I identify it as the ego. So the ego is a side of the personality that thinks it's here. It's not thinking it. It protects us. It's been protecting us since we were children, psychology would say, right? Um, if you were about to touch a hot stove when you were young, it was that thing that was making you move backwards. Mm. So in order for me to lose the weight I've always wanted to lose, I had to decide, ego, you're going to have to sit your ass down. I need to lose this weight. So whenever you make noise because you think we are in danger, because we're changing something about ourselves, I'm going to talk kindly to you and say, nothing is wrong. Allow the soul to take over. The soul is the boss at this point. Don't worry, we're fine. And then consistency, discipline, repetition, until my subconscious mind locks in the new behavior, the new pattern. All right, so I understand what you're saying mm -hmm. from a coaching perspective. Yeah. I'm trying to think if someone doesn't know our lingo. Yeah, so how do it? I simplify it? Yeah. Like literally, guys, like I'm making an example about me. So the work I do now, I live. Mm. I, have, I, I cannot talk about things I have not lived. I'm not allowed to do that, you know? Okay. So literally, the weight loss thing is exactly like that for me. So it was an issue of, okay, I do not have budget for new clothes. I'm an entrepreneur, dude. <laughs> life is tough since 2020 you know so i don't have budget for new clothes i miss my smaller body um i feel heavy in this body so i'm not feeling i'm not a bit something is misaligned here so what must i do okay Zianda, first thing is gonna have to stop drinking but i love savannah these are can you see these are the internal conversation you must have with yourself but what we do is instead of starting the conversation with yourself coach we are always wanting to cause somebody else to have a view about this topic mm. but if i could just sit in my bed and have this chat with me so the Alexander, is Savannah, what what has it done for you the past four years i've gained 40 kilograms because <laughs> of it <laughs> that's the answer all right and how much do you want to lose 40 kilograms okay what must you do Zianda? lose the savannah all right, the ego enjoys it because it's familiar with it now. So what do we do? Then we force the ego. The soul must force the ego through my discipline. So conviction. What happens is I always say to clients, remember when you started driving a car? Mm -hmm. The first day, how was it? Scary, if you can take yourself back. Very messy. Very messy. Ne? You're looking at your feet. You're looking at the gears. You're changing it. You are not feeling one with the car, right? But how was it by day 10? And you've been practicing from 1 until 10. How was mm -hmm. it by day 10? By day 10, you were not looking at your pedals on the feet. You were not probably looking at your gear. You were going 1, 2, and 3 gears without looking at them. You were now focusing on the mirrors. You know, it's that mirror, that mirror, that mirror, you were there. Mm -hmm. Then once you did that coordination again, you just were fluid with it. And then you worried about parking, especially reverse parking and whatever, what, you know. Then that locked in. And then, okay, this driving thing is fine. This car feels like it's part of my body. It's like we're one. Okay, then this driving thing is nice. What happened? It's because of the repetition. Because the brain, what it does, it, it creates a neurological pathway for the new information. How to drive a car is the new information. For that new information to be packaged and saved there. Once it locks it in, even there are people who are like, I can do this in my sleep. It's because of repetition. You've been repeating it until the brain created a pathway for it and then it locked it in. Then it comes through behavior naturally, isn't it? Interesting. That applies with everything. It applies with everything. And mm. when you're putting it, I'm seeing it more as like a journey of life. For a business, you figure out the first parts about getting a product out there. You master that. Yeah. And then you realize, oh, now I need to distribute this thing. Mm -hmm. You distribute it, you figure that part out. Mm -hmm. Oh, I need marketing for this thing. You yeah. do some marketing. Yeah. Every time you figure something out, you move to a new revenue yes. threshold. You yes. find a new level of something else that you need Absolutely. to keep figuring out. So the learning Absolutely. really never stops. It never stops. And why should it? Life would be boring. 
So what would you do every day if you didn't learn everything that's every new thing every day? Like how would your life be? It would be boring, I think. <laughs> so for me, <laughs> so for me, exactly what you're saying. And also, the more there's a new thing to acquire skill, knowledge, behavior, thinking pattern, feeling pattern to acquire, the ego blocks it first. I'm not good enough for that. I'm too shy for that. I don't know how to sell. I don't know how to speak English properly. So the ego will always give you the reasons not to do the thing because, again, you are introducing a new system and it hasn't adapted to the new ways of doing things yet. So now you can anticipate it. You can anticipate that the ego is going to come and block me. So I'm going to identify its voice and I'm going to compassionately and kind, with kindness talk to it so it can relax, so we don't have to fight together, so the soul can take over and my body can take over. My brain can take over. What if someone says, I want to change my life mm -hmm. and I have learned stuff, but the things I need to do to change my life, I'm incompetent in. For example, give me an example of what a person would feel incompetent in, like me and mathematics. All right. So <laughs> incompetent would be, I need to promote myself. Mm -hmm. I can see that the best way to do it is go on social media. Mm -hmm. I've never done this, mm -hmm. and I'm horrible on camera. Uh -huh. So the thing I need to do to get myself out mm -hmm. is the a I've reached my area of incompetence. Uh -huh. I love that example. So is it really incompetence, or is it something far deeper than incompetence that's making the person not do what they need to do for them to access a new market? For could example, be could it be could deeper. be deeper than that because competence is easy to, to tackle. Mm. If I'm incompetent in something, I go study it, I acquire the skill and knowledge, I've, I've got it. So that's the easier one to solve. So for me, it would be much more layered than that. It could be that I'm afraid to sit in the camera and speak because I do not believe I'm worthy physically of that. I don't think I'm good enough for this. I don't think I'm beautiful to be in front of camera. I've always been told this tooth inside my mouth is bad. It makes my mouth look da da da. And that, that still runs me. And because of that small thing, I trip myself from doing the things I know how to do. But because of one thing that's still running in my subconscious mind, because of my background, I'm afraid to be in front of the camera and sell my services. So is it incompetence really, or is it something that is trauma related? And trauma really being something that happened in your past and um, didn't sit well with you and you left it unattended. And it became a wound, a psychological wound that still drives you, still runs you there, you see? So it's okay. deeper than that. So when a client understands that, oh, I'm surface level when I'm saying, oh, I lack the competence, because I'll ask, do you really? So really, you, you, you manufacture these cups you already manufactured it, and you think you can't talk about how a client can use this cup? <laughs> Is that true that you can't talk about You've that? You've done the hard part. <laughs> So it's not true that you can talk about that. So let's talk about what is hindering, what is internally hindering you from believing that you can sell this cup. Then that's where the jam is. So your advice would be that person needs to speak to someone, a coach preferably. Mm. Yeah, a coach preferably um, because coaching modality does exactly what we're doing, coach. It's like it asks you the questions that you're like, ah. Oh, I didn't think about that. So the thought-provoking questioning technique, it helps your subconscious mind to trigger a need to answer. Mm -hmm. Because the answers are inside anyways. Mm -hmm. So we ask it this way so that the mind wants to answer it. Once it answers it, then you're like, I've always known this thing. Why have I, have, why have, have I not been doing it? And then the coach says, voila, power is back to you. Then go do it. There's something you said in your intro, which is there's a lot of good stuff in us. But there's a lot of junk. Of course. So how do I know when I'm reflecting that I'm not pulling out the junk? Hmm, that's <laughs> an interesting one. How does the junk leave you feeling? So Because look, it might not feel like junk. Uh -huh. I'm pulling it out. <laughs> I might not know that. You might think it's, a, it's cold. Yeah. It's cold. <laughs> <laughs> so um, how would you know that you're pulling out junk? That's an interesting question. Um, as I think about it now, I always say to my clients, for me, coaching is not about right or wrong, good or bad, right? It's about does the thought that's coming through your mind empowering or disempowering you? Mm -hmm. Then that's how you differentiate between a junk and a quality 
output. Yeah. So if I'm going to continue lying to myself, saying I'm incapable of sitting in front of a camera and sell a cup I've manufactured, that's a thought mm -hmm. that I've allowed to sit enough in me that I convince myself it's a truth without interrogating it. I allowed it to sit there, became an emotion, became my behavior without actually cleansing the thought first. Because we are very asleep to our thoughts. We don't even hear our thoughts half the, half the time. Yeah, but mm. So if I can practice thinking something and stopping and rethinking it, does it help me? Then don't it that what I'm thinking, does it not help me? Is it going to help me progress? Won't it help me? Where will it hinder me? And then if it's, it's going to hinder you, you change the th thinking pattern. You are think something else. So is it true that I cannot sell a cup that I've manufactured? Oh, no, that's not true. That's a lie. So why am I lying to myself? What is the truth then? Oh, the truth is I can, but maybe something about me is standing in my way. So what is that? So these are the internal conversations we ought to have. Unfortunately, we were not socialized like this. We were not taught to talk to ourselves. We were discouraged by our parents when we were talking to ourselves, remember? And when you are quite direct. Mm -hmm. And I've always been, even as a child. Didn't time. it cause problems for you? I'm a black sheep at this point. In relationships. <laughs> <laughs> so here's how, that's an I'm interesting one. That's an interesting one. Yeah. So as a child, I've always been like speaking. I'll ask something. Like I'm very curious. I'd be like, okay. My, my dad passed on when I was 10 years old. So my mother started to date somebody else. So mm. I was expecting her to come and say, I have a boyfriend now. My mom is a rural girl. So she has no business telling you about her life. Are you mad? <laughs> So can you already see, I'm expecting at 12 years old to come say, Zianda, I have a boyfriend now. She says, Remember, your dad is gone, whatever. I want that conversation. Mm. But then I'm coming from a mom who's coming from a rural area. That's none of your business type of a vibe, right? Yeah. So you can imagine how much we, we fought. We, used to, we didn't get along. <laughs> and my mom, we only got along when I was in my 30s. We didn't get along because she didn't understand that pattern of, of thinking and being. Né? So... I'll answer the question about my assertiveness in, or directness in two mm. ways. So, yes, I've always been like this. Um, I think what helps me is that there's a big dose of compassion and kindness and love within it. So um, a person who pays attention can feel the love and the compassion and the care, mm. but there is an inability to pretend. <laughs> <laughs> Ex explain that. <laughs> or pretense is not my preference. <laughs> yeah, well, so that's why I always say, can you learn to say things as they are, not as you wish they were? So I say things as they are, not as I wish they were. Even to myself, even when I mess up, I'm able to say, dude, no, 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 no. There, I own goal, own goal. That one, mm -mm. And then I debrief myself. That one actually, because it's good that it's a lady saying it. Mm. Isn't this a lesson that's relevant to a lot of ladies? I need women to learn to debrief themselves. Because we don't. As a result, we are not growing up. We are still children in adult bodies because we are unable to debrief ourselves. And to say what we mean the way we mean it. Yes. We pretend a lot. We... I don't want to say lie, but I've just said it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we manipulate a lot. Um, and that's because also, and it's growing up, we were told, keep quiet, shut up. Your voice is not important. You're a girl. You're not important, da, 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 right? Mm. And so we did not learn the ways of saying our truth as it resonates with us. So by the time you tell your mom you don't like what they said to you, you are saying it in 20,000 ways as opposed to what it is. Because you, your voice is muted here. So you have not grown up with the ability to know how to articulate your emotions and your needs and your thoughts. So now as adults, we are doing a lot of backpedaling because we lack that ability. And men are much more assertive than us. Men are much more self-loving than women. Women talk about self-love. They're not doing it. Men are doing self-love. They're not talking about it. Because <laughs> oh. men... <laughs> <laughs> Did you get that? Because that, men that surprised me actually. Ne? Because men grew up being told you're a man. No, no, no. You can come back at eight p.m. He's a boy. He's a boy. He can do whatever. So your strength and your sense of confidence and your sense of being at least was there. You could you could talk when you're not you don't like something mm -hmm. more, more than I could as your sister. Yeah. You know. So Nina Nikule, you grew up 
knowing how to assert your thoughts. Me, I grew up being told, go play with your dolls. When there's a family meeting, go play in the kitchen. You're not even allowed to be there. <laughs> so where did you guys think we learned how to articulate our truth? Where I, could we help? <laughs> are, are you helping some ladies, though? And what does, what does the change, trying that to. change look like, though? Well, Ooh, because sure. I've seen the other extreme as well. Yes. Others who then become assertive, but hey. I don't Rude. know. There's assertive and then there's Rude. this level. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's another thing that we... So you've asked me two questions, right? So one is, am I helping women? Yes. Yeah. But I help them in ways that they are still struggling to realize is help. Okay. Am I making sense? So remember, I say things as they are. So when I do that, the ego blocks that. The defense mechanism comes up. Whoa. Yes. So dangerous. most of my yeah, most of my female clients will say to me, it took me six months to agree to myself that I need your coaching because of your messaging. You just hit too hard. It doesn't feel nice. <laughs> and for me, it's that discomfort that introduces you to the need for change. Yeah. Man? And I feel like we've been handled with like gloves for so long that we really are not waking up to ourselves. So that's why the penetrating approach. Mm. So, yes, I'm helping them, but most of them don't realize I'm helping them yet. It's fine. They'll catch up. It's all right, mm. you know. And I'll give you an example. So, I said um, recently, I said to, to some of my clients, I said, some of us got pregnant intentionally without the consent of the man or of the boy at the time. Who? You see. That hits hard. Even uh -huh. to me, listening as a man. <laughs> I would not want to But be we that. can't start the conversation of healing without surfacing the truth. Because healing does not work independent of truth and forgiveness. Wait, what was the response to that? And the forgiveness must be to self first. Uh. So I'm raising it so that if you're that one, you're able to say, hey, plus, yeah, I thought he was going to stay when I gave him the child. <laughs> You must say it to yourself. You don't even have to say it to me, you know. And then when you raise that to the level of awareness, then you're like, okay, I see how I tripped myself here. And then instead of focusing on blaming him, everything is about him, he's wrong, he's wrong, which he probably is, you also take the, what was my part to play in this outcome that I'm looking at? That's the starting point of healing. Mm. So we're not healing mostly because we don't, we don't have the maturity to tell ourselves the truth about the stuff that we've done Beautiful. or didn't do. What about the other extreme where Which the ladies are assertiveness? Uh, so assertive, it has crossed the line beyond assertiveness to... <laughs> to that one, I always say, so imagine assertiveness. Imagine in Kinobo, in a volume, in a knob, in a yeah. red, you know, the knob, mm -hmm. right? So imagine that it's sitting at the midpoint for volume. Mm -hmm. So we're good with volume. We're all happy, right? Yeah. And then when you dial it up, so it's, this, it's on assertiveness mode. Yeah. You dial it up, it's disrespectful and aggressive. You dialed mm -hmm. it down, it's passive aggressive. aggressive. Assertiveness is, I inform you of my idea, of my perspective, of my thought, of my feeling. And I then give you the context as to why I feel that way, maybe, right? Mm. And then I pause and I allow you to do the same thing. Because, because I'm talking to a human being. My thoughts, my emotions are important. You must also important, process. And yours yes. are also important That's to me. That's yes. So I'm saying, I didn't like it when you did A, B, and C. It made me feel like this. I'm still struggling with this particular trauma that came from my own childhood. It's not your problem, it's mine. But whenever you do that, you trigger that trauma for me. It destabilizes me. Can and you give see? me an opportunity then I'm like, to, pause. to yes. respond? Then you process that. You're like, oh, because now, can you see how I've said it? It's very assertive, mm. but it doesn't trigger any defense on you because it's like, then empathy comes. You're like, oh, I did that because I thought that, that, that. Because you also are a context that comes from also somewhere. You also have your own mm. traumas. So you now saying, oh, I can see how our traumas are playing together and making us unhappy. <laughs> and therefore, I can see now what I can do to half, come halfway. You also come halfway. Then we're done. But then we grew up in families where uh, conflict was resolved with shouting and swearing and repeating words and 
saying tough things that go nowhere, you know? And, and so, so we are repeating that as others, but it doesn't work. Or we grew up in families where when someone is angry, they fold their fist. It doesn't work. It doesn't solve anything. Next mm-hmm. month, we're still going to have the same issue because we didn't deal with it. You see, so that's where coaching comes in. I love it. How do I become the best version of myself? Mm, self-awareness. That's step number that's one. That's step number one. Self-awareness. But for you to even start with self-awareness, you must admit that you are not self-aware first. Is it okay for me to say, yes, I don't know whether I'm coming or going. Apart from knowing my name and my title at work and that I'm a mother, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> so is it okay for for me to admit that I am not self-aware? Maybe that's the starting point. Mm. Recognition, realizing, admitting that apart from... What am from, I looking for? Yeah. <clears throat> so, for example, if I if I ask you, why are you here on earth? Why do you think you came here? Mm. And you can't answer that, then, then it says a lot about whether or not you are self-aware. Actually, many people can't. Yes. Many people struggle with that question. Mm. And I say to people, who are you? Even in the general, the first question is, who are you? Apart from your title, from your name, from... So people are going to be like, I'm Zianda, that's your name, thank you very much. Who are you? Uh, I'm an entrepreneur, all right. That's a title that the labor market has given you, well done. Who are you? I'm a mother, okay, society gave you that because you gave birth to a human being, sharp. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> because those are all roles and titles that society has given you, but you have not told me if all of those things were removed from you, who is the being that's in front of me? What's a typical good answer? So oftentimes my clients come to coaching without an answer to that. Actually, they give me the ones that I've given. Mm-hmm but they don't know how to go deeper, which then takes us through the self-awareness journey. So if you were to ask me, yes, I would tell you that my name is Zianda. It means they multiply. I, I was apparently given the name by my father, who I think had a foresight, because now I do work that when I touch people's lives, they multiply. So that's what my name means to me. Mm-hmm. So that's how I introduce my name. Then who are you? Mm-mm. Part of the things that I've done is there's a soul that's called Badela. That is my 12-year-old son. And I believe that he came to earth to teach me about unconditional love and acceptance. That's mm-hmm. what I derive from him. Then who am I from a work perspective? I really am a channel. What that, what that means is it depends on what the client needs. I become what the client needs because I'm also spiritually aligned. Yeah, man. So you do like a wheel of life? Mm-hmm. In every area of your life, yeah. you have a definition for how yeah. you show up in that area. Absolutely. And so you were saying to me, yo, how are you doing with your assertiveness in a relationship? I'm as feminine as they get in a relationship because that's a position that feels natural to me. He's a very masculine man. So I also slot into mine very easily because he's in his position. So there, I'm a mesh <laughs> <laughs> it feels natural to be that. So there I as much so I always tell people that life is about polarities, right? So as much as I am very independent, I'm very needy. Mm. But I know where to be needy. I can't be needy everywhere. Mm. You know? So as much as I'm very ambitious, I can be very lazy. So self awareness helps you to identify your shadows and see how to pair them up with your positive side without rejecting them. Yeah, man. Oh, so you don't keep your button. I don't demonize my negative side. Um, there were sides of my shadow that needed healing because they came from a uh, traumatic childhood background. Those ones I've dealt with them, healed them because they really didn't come. I don't think they came with the package that arrived in the womb. They just came with earthly stuff. So mm. those ones where I would be insecure, that's stuff that came from trauma, insecurity, you know, not good enoughness, not feeling worthy. It's stuff that came with human interaction and losses and gains and whatever the case is, right? But there's stuff that's just, like I've said now, ambition, yet, yet I want to sleep eight hours. Like mm. someone just won't understand it, I understand it. <laughs> so, so, and I accept it. There used to be a time where I did not like it, but I used to call it procrastination the side of me that just sometimes doesn't feel like doing anything. But now I know because of how my system and my spiritual side works, there are times where I'm put to rest, like rest so we can download more. So I, that's what I do. Okay. But I'm not like somebody else. Somebody else is wired differently. 
So if someone has reached this level of self-awareness, they have a good idea of who they are and what contribution they want to make in the world. What Absolutely. comes next? Absolutely. If they still want to be the best version of themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And they also understand that the best versions of selves are unique. Mm. For me, I do not know. I know our socialization has taught us to be similar. So my mom would say, you're not like your brother. You talk too much. Your brother is very quiet. What about that? I don't want to be like him. I want to be like me. Is that okay? You know? So in churches, we wear the same clothes. Why? Why must we wear the same clothes? What's the reason <laughs> behind that? <laughs> okay. You know what I'm saying? So so at school, the same thing, the same uniform. Why can't we own our clothes and come to school? You know, and come to whatever we're there to do. So it feels to me like we've just been indoctrinated to forcefully be similar that we now think being unique is wrong. But we are created as unique beings. So in some ways, we're trying to go against nature. We are all unique. You are not like me. You will never be like me. I will never be like you. Which is why I always say for organizations, I help them with the toxicity, letting go of toxicity, because it comes mostly from wanting to be the same and not working together with the uniqueness and seeing the jam in that. You see? So let me give you an example, an analogy. Please. Of the importance of being unique. So I'm not a I'm not a baker, I'm not good at baking, eh? but when you bake a cake, there's a number of ingredients that the baker puts here. Salt yeah. looks similar to sugar, but they are not the same. Yeah. Even the granules are not the same. Even the taste, right? But they're both white. From afar, you might think they are the same. When you come closer, they are not. Mm. Then the flour wants to mimic these two. But then when you touch the flower, I mean, it's not the same texture here. It's a different granular, whatever the case is, right? And then comes butter. Mm. And then you've, you've already um, maybe um, beaten your, your egg. So it's scrambled. It looks like it looks yellow. It looks similar to butter, but not the same. Can you see where I'm going with this? But when you put them together, and the baker puts them together in different intervals. Mm -hmm. It doesn't just mix them up. They random, put, yeah. Yes. Then the flour is the first medium to go in. Then who follows after the sugar? Maybe I don't know. After the flour. I don't know. I'm not a baker, right? So the baker has that sequence. And then there's measurements. They are different. Yet this thing, when it's pulled together by the liquid, it's going to get into the oven in a different, whatever baking tool they're going to use, square round. Mm. Then it comes out of there having forged together. This beautiful thing that we're gonna all eat ultimately. How did it forge together so well, fluffy and nice, but they were all different? So therefore for me, as human beings, that's what we're missing. What if our uniqueness, when put together with the right dosage, right measurements, right sequence, they were gonna give us something that's a jam that we've never seen or experienced. So why were we indoctrinated to be similar? So your lesson there is we don't have to be the same. We shouldn't be because we're not. If Even if we're going to work together and build something. Yep. That's why now in teams you have managers who are going to be intimidated by Zianda's intelligence because they think we must be the same. Meanwhile, you must borrow from it and actually step up your department through my intelligence because you understand maybe I'm the sugar in the mixture of the baking thing. Okay, I'll, t I'll pick on your example. If... If, let's say I'm the sugar mm -hmm. in the example, how do I know that now I'm being too much? Of a sugar. But remember, you don't because know. Because if, oh. Remember there's a baker. The baker is in charge. So who's the baker in this instance? And who's who the, am I? Who's the baker in your am life? Am I the sugar? Or who's the I baker? <laughs> who's the baker in your life? In my life, I believe I'm the baker. I cook. I, I decide. Okay. Well. In my life, I believe God is the baker. Mm. Explain yeah. the difference. So I'll give you my context for why yes. I said I am. Yes. So in my life, I believe God is the baker. So there is a lot of, of nudging and synchronicities and dreaming and intuition and a lot of stuff that God does to kind of mix, mix the ingredients, right? Mm -hmm. In the work, in my business, in my business for the people I work with, I'm the baker. So I'm the one who's going to be like, okay, that one talks a lot, they must go present. That one is a good convincer, they must go do business development, whatever, whatever. But then there's someone who oversees this thing, who sees it from a helicopter view, who's able to say, okay, the dosage of that, the dosage of that. The problem now within our team sometimes is that the sugar wants to control the salt. But come on, just your lane. Keep to your lane. 
No, your lane keep you. No, your lane. lane and yeah, at least you split it into mm. in your life and in your business yeah. because I always look at it as I it's not fate that's predestined to say I'm going to wake up and go there. I can mm-hmm. decide to go, I can decide to not go. Yes. And the consequences I agree. for those decisions I will pay for. That's I why agree. I say I'm I a agree. Baker. Yes. Because I know every decision I start taking from now. Yes. Yes. It's going yes. to have a yes. financial consequence. And Absolutely. I will pay for it. I agree with that. So that I call I borrow this from a guy called Aaron Apke. He says non doership. You you must be the non doership. The practice non doership in life. Which What's means that? which means you know the doer of life. We fool ourselves with thinking we are in charge. We're not. Mm. Like every day, something else controls the dynamic of the day, right? Mm. So we are non doers in that. We shouldn't come from the premise that tomorrow I know what I'm going to do. Here's my to do list. Da, 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 da. You can do it, but be open to the fact that it might just be overhauled and, and look the other way. Mm. The day can do that to you, right? But there are points at which you must cooperate with life, which is what you, you're saying. There are points where, okay, the doer is doing the life, but this path is for me to cooperate. This is where I'm supposed to do a thing. Mm. But I mustn't think I'm in charge, though. I think 2020 showed us that very nicely, that yeah. we're not in charge. Yeah, no, it did. Mm. It did. Someone was saying, actually on radio, they were asking yesterday, that if you do the right things, manage your money right, does it automatically mean that you're going to be successful? I say for the most part, if you follow the right principles, yeah, for the most part, but mm-hmm. not always. Mm. Yep. Because COVID is the best example. Yeah, absolutely. And I even absolutely. say there are entrepreneurs who will tell you that I had insurance, I had savings, I was making profits, my business was growing, yep. but I happened to be in Deben. And at some point I watched my business fall uh-huh. apart in a flood uh-huh. and the insurance couldn't cover it. That's it. That's it. You see. So therefore something else is controlling life. And there's there has to be it looks like there has to be this dance that happens between us and the thing, whatever you wanna call the thing. You know? So there's a client of mine, I said to him, So what when you wake up, what do you do? Because we're talking about wheel of awareness. Are you aware of, of just you as a being? Are you aware of your five senses? Are you aware that you see, you touch, you taste, you hear, you smell. Or it's just something that is behind the scenes. It's like when you walk into a room, you don't use your smelling ability to smell the condition of this room mm. before you have a meeting because you could do that. Mm. If you are a hearer, you could be like, something is going to happen today. So the five senses help you with that. And then you add intuition and innov- well, envisioning and what other, other senses as well, you mm. know. Then he says to me, no, I wake up at six, I put up the geezer, I go to the bathroom and I touch my phone. And I go on social media, whatever. Mm-hmm. Then I said, okay, so what have you told the day to be like? How, what, energetically, spiritually, what have you instructed the day to be like for you? Fuck all. Nothing. So the day is going to do what it wants to you then. Because there's no intention. <laughs> You're just floating, you know. So um, there's a lot of layers in awareness. There's a lot of layers in emotional intelligence and... And the more emotionally intelligent you are, the freer you become, the more inner peace you get, you know? All right. I think as we get close to wrapping up, I am looking at the chakra method, <laughs> harmony and healing. Yes. What are we talking about? Ah, oh, yes. This is the new baby in the block. And remember I told you the story about coaching, how it unraveled me, and it took me through all of these things of, Zianda, you are too... So I used to be the dialing up assertiveness as well, okay. and it becomes rude, and then you see people like, ah, oh, it doesn't land bridges. well, yes. And then when I don't do it, I go to the passive-aggressive side and become a people-pleaser there. It didn't work either, you know? So then I had to learn what is assertiveness. So that that life taught me that. So there's... The, the self-coaching journal is, is a tool that helps you to be aware of you as a being okay. and your tendencies and things that you might want to let go of or do more of. Then after I did that, I then realized there's also deeper stuff that I'm going through. That's deeper than just mindset. Okay. That's much more spiritual, emotional, energetic, and all of those great things, right? Um, I'll give you one example. Chakra system is a, um, it, it originates from the um, Western side of things. 
um, there's a lot of modalities that we use. So this is a spiritual modality. It says that we have seven chakra points in our bodies, energetic points in our bodies that connect us uh, internally, energetically or spiritually. And so they do determine the quality or lack thereof of life that we have, right? What led me to this was after I done my consciousness, self-coaching, self-awareness, emotional intelligence, I was like, okay, now what? Because I, I still have triggers. I still trip myself. Yes, I'm aware now. I can debrief myself and so on. But so how do I holistically heal this thing? So I don't have to be cleaning up after myself regularly, you know? Mm -hmm. Then that led me to the chakra system. I'll only mention the first one. The first one they are saying is at the base of your spinal cord. It's called the root chakra. It's like um, this. The, your, ar your arrival here on earth. Like it's sitting there, okay. right? And... Understanding that chakra, which is the root chakra, led me to have conversations with my mom about what was life for her when she conceived me. Because there was a sense in me that I don't feel grounded. I don't feel confident about myself. I don't feel worthy. I don't feel good enough. So which means my feet are not on the ground, literally. You know, like I, I date the wrong people. I, I get used all the time. I get disregarded by managers i so what's going on what's why it feels like i'm not rooted there's something missing you know then i had to trace back because now i know everything comes from somewhere then i was mm -hmm. like okay i'm done with the traumas that are on the surface i want to go deeper then my mom has told me that my dad was cheating on her on the year that i was conceived the conceiving was not necessarily planned came as a surprise and they were going through a rough patch now you can imagine that my arrival in that womb was very rough because energy transfers. If she sleeps on tears every night, I'm affected by that. If she's angry every night, I'm affected by that, you know? So then it then started to introduce me to why my pain is so deep. Why my pain about life, about belonging, about being loved or not mm -hmm. is so deep. It started me in the womb. Because the root chakra is developed when you are already, when you are there in the womb, you see? So, so this book helps you with what, silencing you, you the inner noise. Like there's things that you do. So there's um, there's meditation that you do. There is there's um, affirmations that you must say to yourself. There's a different way. Like you must look yourself in the mirror and talk to yourself and say certain things. You know. Now you are readjusting your inner core, because now only you can do this. I call it reparenting yourself. Because my mom is 78, is not going to do this. Doesn't even understand what I'm talking about. But I can feel the discord <laughs> inside of me. And there was one client of mine that said, Zianda, good and well, subconscious mind, we get it. But there's still too much noise in my head. And I said, balance your chakra system. Because once I did mine, you clear every chakra, you clean it. You firstly become aware mm -hmm. that I'm, I'm not feeling good enough. I'm not feeling confident. I don't feel like I'm worthy of good stuff. What, what could be that? Okay, my root chakra, how did I arrive here on earth? How, how was my first six years on earth? What was happening in my life then? Because the body keeps everything that happens to it. The cells, they save, they save everything that we go through. Mm. Nothing is forgotten by the body. The body is an intelligence. So then I had to do that to track, to track my own healing, my own growth internally now, not only on the mind, in my own body intelligence. And that led me to inner peace. But then, yeah. So I then wrote this book again to say, it helped me. Maybe it will help somebody, you know. And these are the things that so are if they, completely if outside person, of our tradition. If a person is reading the book, mm. they can be doing processes to help themselves yeah. clean up the yeah. chakra. And block the chakra, heal the chakra, balance it. Then you go to the next one. Then you go to the next one. Then they align. And then what you have inner peace. What kind of people need the book? Anyone who is curious enough to be self-aware must then land on this book after. Because once you become self-aware, all the things that truthfully bother you, they come to the surface. Because that's what awareness is about. It's bringing the stuff, the junk that's sitting there. Because what the junk does, according to me, is it covers your brilliance. It covers your awesomeness. It covers that inner genius that you have that is sitting there dormant, not ex being um, activated by you. So we're clearing that because we want to see who are you. Why are you here? What's this internal genius that you have that we are not experiencing yet? Okay. You see, so the self-awareness journey and the inner healing journey kind of puts out the purpose. It's like, this is what I'm here to do. Like, I've been on my own since 2015, yet I can't write a job description of what I do because I've tapped into my inner genius. Mm. You see? And that continues to pay. Yes. 
then money follows that so pretty much anyone, anyone. can look for the book anyone anyone um but i would suggest someone who's self aware and can self regulate because then that suggests you are emotionally intelligent enough to know even here what resonates with you in this book what doesn't you're not going to do it because then i said you must you must have a discerning spirit oftentimes when you are self aware your discernment sharpens so you plan like, oh, okay i'll do yoga for me or oh, okay i'll do hiking for me oh, okay i'll okay. just exercise for me but when i'm exercising i'm setting up the intention in my mind of what i want to do with my chakra what am i cleansing what am i releasing because everything is energetic so you must just release the things out of you when you say inner balance what do you mean um inner peace inner harmony inner love is inner balance you know where you are okay with life exactly as life is they didn't answer your phone you are fine with it you're not making a story about it i get it you know i'm just smiling because when you're talking in a piece i was thinking chicken licking <laughs> eh chicken licking <laughs> Se- seriously so so you get to a point where you don't allow any more your ego to dictate your daily life experiences because you now know the ego is going to always have a right or wrong good or bad vibe about it so they didn't answer the phone it's okay maybe they're busy let's move along um i didn't get that job maybe it's not mine to have that client didn't come back maybe i was not necessarily um the person nominated to serve their need right now so in a piece that sense of contentment and allowing and flowing with the um, energy of life can you tell me one or two stories of clients that you've helped the clients that you're proud of all of them yes <laughs> <laughs> one or two success stories uh, someone who currently mm. there is the one client most of my clients currently i have i don't i don't even know them physically mm. so one of them um her name is Nikki i'm so proud of her she she follows my work through my tiktok videos mm. and whatever reason it she applies and then she she sent me about 3 weeks ago or a month ago a long whatsapp saying zianda i had not been speaking to my mom for 20 years she's an old lady I have she's in Cape Town. I haven't been speaking to my mom for 20 years because of things I blamed her for and I've done the work and I've done the journal, the self-coaching journal mm-hmm. and I've been applying these things and I follow your videos. There are books in the journal that I recommend people to buy and read as well. And she says I did all of that. We are speaking Zianda. We are best friends. She's told me about her past traumas. I now understand why she was the way she was. I'm proud of her because she is self coaching properly like i never even had one session with her she's just using the journal and follows content that resonates with her and applies that's powerful you know so i'm proud of her because it's exactly what i actually w- wanted the other one is and as well i haven't seen her physically she's on facebook she said to me she's the one who said it took me 6 months to say i need your services because you just you touched me in my studio so i've been uncomfortable but once she did it uh, about 2 weeks ago she says to me Z I'm suffering there's someone I don't even know that is me that I'm loving but then there's something inside of me that keeps stopping her and I said it's the ego now now the journey is about silencing the ego or taming or talking to the ego positively so it can relax you know so even her she's doing it on her own she just bought this book for inner harmony because I that's exactly what I want I always say to clients you only need three sessions with me then you must just flourish you must self coach and debrief yourself because we can't go through life dependent on medicines on coaches on everything everything is you know people must be must be able to meet their own power and, and self heal find you so info at zianda.co.za via email on uh, facebook I'm on zianda mazamisa that's where I'm mostly active but there's also zianda m page on facebook tiktok at mindset badass <laughs> <laughs> Or you can search the you know M. You've got a clone account. Do I? Yeah. It's actually your name. Uh There was Don't one. Don't look for it now. No, we, there was one. Uh does it post things? Yeah, it's got some posts of your stuff. Don't lie. I didn't know that. I'll check it. I'm telling you. Oh my goodness. I followed liked some of my videos. I thought it was you. I actually sent a message. Are you sure? There was no response. 
I don't normally respond to messages, but I'll check. No, but there was no response, and then we spoke like a month uh, later. Oh, uh, and I saw you don't know nothing about that conversation. Oh <laughs> my god! I'll check it. I didn't know that. So yeah, TikTok Zianda M waking people up or the M. Wait, if you say Zianda M, they'll find the other one. Mindset mm. betters. There's two. I have the other one is Zianda. They multiply. This is not that one. I'm not sure, but I know it doesn't have a lot of followers. Yeah, so I've got two that I've plugged there. It says Zianda. They multiply. Then the Zianda M, um, which is a mindset bed as well. Anyways, let's let's continue Anyways. with at mindset betters <laughs> 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 and uh, LinkedIn Zianda Mazamisa. Closing with, what's your passion? Oh, do you focus on women, men, boys, girls, everybody? Men and women and youth. Um, youth, anyone from 18 and above, preferably from 21. I prefer the working youth. Uh, women and men, yes, who are working, who are not working, who are parenting, who are divorcing, who have just divorced. So you Everyone. take these for one-on-one -on -one sessions? One-on-one -on -one sessions, plans. group coaching sessions when they are comfortable. I've recently started doing family sessions, which are very tough, but are doable. So family sessions, I call them group sessions as well. Uh, so, yeah. Okay. Parting words to any one of them. Coach, I think um, my parting words is love is a very misunderstood energy. Okay. Love is being dwarfed or we make it a toddler by romanticizing it. And I say so because at the core of everything I do that we do is love. We do the work we do because of love. You put this together this studio because of love of something, you know. Um, we're working every day, making the money because there's something we love that we want to look after. Yet we are disconnected to love. Mm. And therefore we treat each other unkindly because of that disconnection. Yet we say we are love because we are made in the image of a being that we say it's love. Does it make sense? Mm. So I think as people we need to reconnect to the love energy and stop romanticizing it. And yeah. thank you. <laughs> thank you, Coach. <laughs> thank you for hanging with us till uh, this time. It's that been feels exciting. Deep. That mm. feels like you yeah. downloaded quite a bit. Goodness gracious me. Where was I? In my back. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. That was nice. Yeah, that's what it's like. But thank you for hanging with us till this time. And I yes. guess from our side, it is see you on the next episode. Yes, sir.